Hey everybody, have you ever just wanted to go for a ride? You know, like a little staycation kind of thing? It's a beautiful, cold, sunny day, so we are going about an hour south of where we live to look for some historical markers and covered bridges. Anything else you think we'll find? Oh, I don't know. Hopefully warmer weather. It's only 27 <laughs> degrees here in Huntington. Well, we are going south, so. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's <laughs> try it out. Everybody, we're in Bedford, Pennsylvania. Behind us is the Bedford Courthouse, which was is one of the oldest courthouses still in use in the state of Pennsylvania, which is really, really neat. We're gonna look around and see what other historical, fun, educational stuff we can find. And some of that cool stuff was the old inn called the Espy House that we found. This is where President George Washington and his staff stayed when they dropped into Bedford to squash the Whiskey Rebellion in 1794. Something else we found that was really cool, especially if you like coffee, is the world's largest coffee pot. Built in 1927 along the brand new Route 30 Lincoln Highway, the coffee pot started as a lunch stand for weary travelers. Today it serves as a souvenir shop and can be found just a few minutes outside of downtown Bedford. Even though we found all this neat history, our primary purpose was to look for covered bridges. Bedford County has 14 of them. We took the nine bridges in 90 minutes tour that can be found in the Bedford County Visitor's Guide. One of our first stops is right here at the Old Bedford Village where there is a refurbished covered bridge you can see behind me. This is the Claycomb Covered Bridge. It was originally built in 1880 and sits at the entrance to Old Bedford Village. It's just off of Business Route 220, about a quarter of a mile from the PA Turnpike exit. So this is the Colvin Covered Bridge. It was built in 1866. It's number seven on the Bedford County Bridge Tour. It was refurbished in 1997 and you can now drive across it and it's safe and it's really, really pretty. It's beautiful on this beautiful winter day. This is Cuppet's Covered Bridge. It sits off of Route 96 in Bedford County. Um, there's a guide rail in front of it off of 96, so you can't drive across it. Um, I'm not sure if it's because it's not safe or if it's owned by private owners. Regardless, you can't drive across it, but you can walk across it. John has some information that he'd like to share with you about the type of architecture that this bridge shows. Go ahead. In 1804, Theodore Burr patented what is known as the Burr Truss Design. And what that is, is they use this long truss. And you'll see them in many covered bridges. They're very popular. And it actually, this truss alone is strong enough that it can carry the entire weight of this bridge by itself. But in addition to help hold up the roof, they use these king posts, which basically to me, they look like upside down Y's, but there's that upside down portion of the Y, which helps pick up and transfer that load. This is the Nisley Covered Bridge. It was built in the 1880s. Um, it's off of Dunnings Creek Road here in Bedford. It's actually number 10 on the Bedford County Covered Bridge map. You should definitely check this one out. It is not open to traffic, but there is a place for you to stop and pull over. Hey, any idea why they uh, put roofs on these bridges? Well, the idea back in the day was that, uh, that you know, it was a wooden roadway. So if you put a roof over top of it, they figured that they could change the life expectancy of the roadway from maybe 20 years, maybe less, to as much as 100. And uh, even though it's probably been right around 100 years that this bridge has been here and more, and it looks a little saggy and it's not up for travel, uh, it's still here. It's still here. You can at least walk across it. Uh, now, about the beginning of the 19th century, the early 1900s, they found out that they could build bridges out of wrought iron and cast iron, and it was cheaper and better. And that was the uh, brought about the onset of the, I guess they call them topless bridges. <laughs> topless bridges. Typical man. 
this one is the Snooks Covered Bridge. It's little. It's narrow. Oh. <laughs> it is a burr truss bridge. It is. Tell me those long, long curvy arches carrying all the weight. So it would be bad to hit one of those. Is that uh, what you're saying? Yeah, since it's holding up the whole weight of the bridge. Yeah. 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 Right. Well, that was fun. We were only able to get the five of the 14 cover bridges on our tour, and mostly because we were cold and hungry. Our stomachs led us to one of our favorite restaurants in Bedford County, the Jean Bonnet Tavern, the site of the Whiskey Rebellion. The earliest records are that this property was transferred by William Penn, William Penn, Wow. And 690 acres. Now we don't have that much left out for the Chambonet since at this point, but apparently he was an Indian trader. And later this place was a commissary for General George Washington. Is so, this where the Whiskey Rebellion thing took yeah, place? Yeah, the Whiskey Rebellion no way. took place just outside the resort. 11,000 troops encamped here. We've had a really fun day in Bedford County. We saw lots and lots of covered bridges, tons of history, and it was a really fun time. It was great to finally get out of the house in these cold winter days and do a little bit of a vacation. You know, you don't have to go far in order to have a good time. Thanks for watching. To help us grow our channel, please like, share, and subscribe. We'd also like to thank the Bedford County Visitors Bureau for inspiring us. For even more info on Bedford County, go to our website at www.thefunchasers.com.